I am Carol Roth, an entrepreneur, small business advocate, and I also play myself on television. And I am thrilled to welcome you to the Small Business Social Series hosted by Bank of America. Now, whether you are a small business owner looking to celebrate the success and hard work of your employees or bring the holiday spirit to your local community, the holiday season is filled with opportunities to give back. Now, I know that rewarding employees with holiday perks can bring many benefits, such as boosting morale, but it often requires some sort of personal sacrifice from employers like you. So today I am joined by a powerhouse panel of small business and work culture experts to provide you with tips and strategies for bringing the holiday cheer to your workplace and beyond. Joining us is Sharon Miller, who is the Managing Director and Head of Small Business at Bank of America. Sharon, it's so great to see you. Great to see you, Carol. Thanks for having me. We also have Callie Williams-Yost, who is a flexible work culture strategist and the founder and CEO of Flex Strategy Group and Work Life Fit, Inc. Callie, so nice to see you. Hi, Carol. Great to be here. And last but never, ever least is Steve Strauss, who is a small business expert and a columnist with USA Today. Steve, always great to see you. Hey, Carol. Great to be here. All right. I want to jump right into things with the panel. And the first thing I want to know from you guys is whether you think it is important for small business owners to give their employees a holiday perks. The Bank of America 2016 Small Business Owner Report found that around 30% of entrepreneurs said that they need to make at least one personal sacrifice in order to offer holiday perks. So Sharon, let me come to you first. Do you think that there are certain types of perks and benefits that small business owners can offer that their employees find particularly meaningful during the holiday season? And if so, how do they offer those without breaking the bank? Well, Carol, it's always important that uh, we recognize and reward employees. As small business owners, think about the, the going into the new year and how they prepare to make sure that they're setting aside funds each and every month to, to reward and recognize so that when the holidays come upon us, it's not causing some type of cash crunch. So it is absolutely important, whether it be a holiday party or just a vacation day off, extra time off. What we did find in the, the small business owner report were many small business owners said that they were making personal sacrifices in order to give employees these types of perks. So if you just plan ahead and budget every single month and know that this is what you want to do at the end of the year, planning ahead will just do a world of good um, as we move into 2017. I love that. You fail to prepare, prepare to fail. You always want to be prepared. Steve, let me come to you with that then. What are those wonderful perks that you think a small business owner should offer that are really meaningful this time of year and hopefully don't break the bank? Well, let me tell you what not to do to start with, Carol. I, I once had a, 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 a job. I can't even say the word, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before you discovered entrepreneurship, you had exactly, one of those. Exactly, right? Yeah. Um, and it wasn't the greatest place in the world to work. And so we were very surprised when they said that they were going to have a holiday party for us. Uh, we went off to the holiday party, spent a couple, two hours there, you know, three in the afternoon. It was no, no big deal. Uh, until <laughs> three days later, they tell us that we needed to work two hours overtime to make up for the time we had been at the party. <laughs> so yeah, the worst place to work ever. So if you're, you know, most small businesses, of, businesses, of course, most small business owners, and we saw in the small business owner report, want to do right by their employees, want to make, take care of their employees. This time of year, as Sharon said, time off is especially welcome. I think even hiring some temporary help to give your regulars the time off to go do some shopping, or go to a kid event, whatever it is, uh, is really important. Maybe set up a, a gift wrapping station uh, in an extra room at the office. People would really appreciate that. And most of all, a little pinch might be okay. You know, meaning if you feel it financially and you have to give everyone a bonus, you get to give everyone a bonus. That's great. People would really, employees really would appreciate that this time of year, especially. All right, so it's okay to make a little personal sacrifice. Just exactly. Some, you don't want to. You want. You don't want to be in total pain, but uh, a, a little bit of a pinch is good. 
we, we all want to save money. We want to do it. You know, we're, we're small businesses, but it's okay to feel it sometimes for sure. Yeah. And, and when you give to your employees, then they end up being happy. It resonates with customers. They do better for you, Callie. I know this is right in your wheelhouse and you know how to reward employees and make them feel good. So what are some of your best suggestions? Well, I'm going to build on what Steve and Sharon already talked about, which was, hey, small businesses are just inherently more flexible than their larger competitors. And this is the time of year where you really can use that to your advantage. You can be flexible in how, when, and where your people work. People love flexibility because what it gives them is a little bit of time. And it actually doesn't even have to be much of a sacrifice. You could just let some of your people remote work and they're still gonna do their jobs, they're gonna get the job done, but they could just save the commuting time and use that to get some extra shopping done, to go to their kids' Christmas pageant, and people really value that at the at this time of year. So again, it really can actually benefit your business because you're still getting the job done, but your people feel great, and study and study after study has shown that people who have the flexibility and are able to manage these things that are meaningful to them actually give you more. So you will benefit in the end. I love that because as a small business owner, it doesn't cost you really anything, but for your employee, it is, how shall we say, priceless. Absolutely. All right, I wanna move along and talk a little bit about engaging in the local community this time of year. The Bank of America Small Business Owner Report this fall found that 62% of small business owners said residents in their local community actively shop at small business, which I think is really, really good news. Right. And also in the spirit of holiday giving, the same report found that 67% of entrepreneurs give back to their communities by supporting local charitable and nonprofit organizations. So Steve, I wanna kick it off with you. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important for entrepreneurs to engage in their local communities like this and what are some of the criteria that a small business owner should be looking for when finding which charity or nonprofit to collaborate with? So I really think there's two benefits to helping out locally. Uh, the first is it helps your community. I mean, it's the right thing to do. Uh, so many small businesses are local businesses. You know, some are some are you know online or whatever it may be. But for the vast majority of businesses, we're local businesses, and so helping out the community that helps us really is great and everyone can go volunteer um, as, as Callie said before at, a, at a, you know, a food bank or something like that or just giving to the right cause. But there's also a second benefit and that is there's a benefit to the business. I mean you're going to be creating a great culture if you create a culture of giving and of uh, supporting local, the local community especially. Uh, employees like working for places like that, customers like shopping at places like that, millennials especially we have found. Uh, really like to support businesses that do the right thing. So all together, both for the community and for your business, uh, helping out uh, helps you as well. Yeah, there's there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. I, I know many people have said that before, but it, it stands out to me so much as you're saying that, Steve. Sharon, exactly. I want to come to you because obviously Bank of America has branches all across this country really engaged in the local community. Can you talk a little bit about why you think that this is so important and maybe some of the criteria a small business owner can be looking at when they think about collaborations? Absolutely. When we think about um, our nationwide footprint, I, I think Bank of America offers value to small business owners because we are a national footprint. However, we operate in 90 local markets across this country. And so this is very much a local business. Uh, small business is a local business and it is a reciprocal relationship. So uh, we expect for people that are local to come and shop or eat, if you're a restaurant owner, in our local small businesses. At the same time, small business owners are giving back, whether that be their time, their talent, their money to those local communities. And that's the same way Bank of America operates. I mean, I think about we give our employees time off every single week to volunteer, whether that be through time, uh, whatever they're interested in. So, so it is so important. We have to invest locally. Small business owners are the, the lifeblood of this economy and it is a local business. So we just make sure that we're supporting them every single day. 
Yeah, and it's very reciprocal, you know, as you give to that community, it Absolutely. strengthens the community and that just benefits everybody. It really ends the up more win you give, I think the more you get, right? I mean, you have to give to get. Absolutely. It's kind of like life, right? Yes. Very, right. very well said. Very well said. All right, Kelly, so let me come to you, you know, as you're looking at the different opportunities, because there's always so many great causes to support, whether it be charities or nonprofits in your local community. How do you really hone in and pick which one? Well, you know, I think this is another great opportunity for either to let the individual employees say, hey, here's time. You can use flexibility in the way you work to, do, to donate your time to the cause that you feel strongly about this holiday season and really support that. Or you could have people get together and pick a, a organization that the whole team is going to devote some time to. There's nothing better than when you actually show up. And as a team, as from an organization, commit to doing something in person for that organization during the holiday season. It really does make a difference. And I also think this is a way to start to do something in the community, not just in the holidays, but throughout the year. Maybe have the whole group say, let's pick a, a, a charity or a not-for-profit that we're gonna commit to for the next 12 months and start now and then make that commitment going forward. It really is a great team building exercise and can make people feel terrific. Yeah, and that's such an important point. This isn't you do this once, everybody feels really great about themselves, and then you go away and you show up again, you know, on December 20th the following year. This is an ongoing effort to be able to, to connect with your community and the people who could really use your help, your expertise, your time, and to do that on an ongoing basis in a way that your entire organization can get behind and really becomes part of the, the mission that drives your business. Yep. And you can really use that flexibility. Again, I go back to the flexibility. I think sometimes leaders think it has to happen on their personal time, but really you can find ways to make it happen. Maybe even during, I can't get over Steve's story about having to make up the time. For them, so that, I'm right. stuck on that. I'm like, <laughs> that was just the it's dumbest It's so shocking, thing. 20 years I, later. So I had to just say like, that. It's like giving you a gift and then taking it back when I you're know. done. I, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on this. I just want business owners to know there is a way you can use the flexibility in the way people work. You <laughs> actually have to make up the time that they're going to do the volunteer work. Well, and Kelly, that's such a good point, right? This idea that as small businesses and as small business owners, we, we do have more flexibility. And yes. That is one of our strategic advantages that we really Absolutely. should use. Yep. Yeah. And it builds the culture, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, volunteerism, giving back, that is the culture that we want to keep promoting because um, it, it's just so critical to how we do business. And, and it lets you attract the right talent and it lets you retain the talent. And uh, Steve, I think you may have mentioned this, but especially the younger generations, millennials yes. and going into Gen Z, they're really, really focused about having that mission and doing something that's good. And if that's built into the culture that Sharon was talking about, that's a really great way to, to continue to attract and retain the right talent. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to leave 2016 here for one moment, and I'm going to look ahead. I want you to all get your crystal balls out. We're going to look ahead into 2017. And if I look at the fall 2016 Small Business Owner Report again, it found that small business owner optimism about the economy and the business outlook was still relatively, how shall I say, lukewarm. But now that the 2016 elections are behind us, Sharon, do you think that, that that outlook changes as we move into 2017? And with that, what are some of the good resolutions that small business owners should be thinking about for 2017 to help them grow their businesses? Yeah, so the, the small business owner report was concluded right before the presidential election. So we see every single election cycle that there's uncertainty. Um, so that we were not surprised that there was a tepid response when it came to how do you feel about the economy. The great thing about small business owners, and I travel around the country and meet with so many every single day, and I'll tell you, there is such a resiliency as well as an optimistic attitude. Um, when I go into cities and the restaurants are full, where you're not able to get a reservation, where you're seeing cranes building buildings, those are signs to me that there is optimism out there and the economy is moving. 
Um, we're in November, we're in December now, but certainly in the November data that we've seen post-election, there is an uptick in optimism um, as we survey small business owners across the country. And that's not surprising. I think anytime you get past uncertainty, regardless of who was elected, uh, you're going to find a, an uptick in their certainty, and now we can continue to move forward. I love the voice of reason, and uh, adding to the voice of reason, the voice of optimism. Steve Strauss, you're a small business owner. Are you feeling optimistic? Definitely optimistic. You know, the, the economy's been doing really well recently, and this time of year, you can't help but be optimistic and, and think forward. I think, Carol, there's kind of two resolutions people might want to think about this time of year. Uh, one is look at creating a new profit center for your business, right? We kind of do, we all fall into ruts, especially as small business owners. We can fall into a rut. We do the same thing. We know what works. Uh, this is a great time of year to think, think ahead. A lot of us do have a little extra time right now, unless we're a retail business doing that kind of thing. Uh, come up with a new profit center. Secondly, maybe come up with a new marketing idea because if you keep doing the same marketing again and again and again, you're going to be just in front of the same eyeballs again and again and again. So by coming up with a new marketing scheme, a new marketing strategy, you're going to get your business in front of new people. You have a new profit center to sell them something. You're going to be happy and you're going to have a great 2017. I love that. I'm going to add on top of that, Steve, as you're looking at your marketing, don't forget on doubling down on your existing clients. I'm really big at looking at your financial statements seeing which are those big customers that already love you and use them as a source to not only upsell or to buy from you more frequently, but to tell everybody that they know about you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and look to them to deepen, right? You want to deepen those relationships, make sure you're strengthening them and, uh, and making sure that you're, you're leveraging them to your point, Carol, uh, for referrals, because if you do a great job for one person, they're going to tell 10 people about you. So, so make sure that you're leveraging that network. All right, Kelly, so we've got great resolutions from Sharon in terms of deepening those connections and getting referrals, and Steve with the marketing plan. What about you? What do you say to a small business owner who's thinking about growth in 2017? What should their New Year's resolution be? Leverage, leverage, leverage the inherent flexibility in your operating model. And there are two ways that specific examples of how you can benefit from that. One. There are small businesses that we've worked with that has, have really gone in and really leveraged the remote work opportunities in the way their operating model can get the job done. And they've been able to save tons of money on their real estate expenses. They don't need as much office space. So right there, you can save some money. Also, you know, turbocharge the talent that you can access. If you're willing to go outside of your geographic region, you can maybe hire people who can contribute to your growth that you maybe could not have accessed before because they can't relocate. So really look at how by being more flexible, which again is your competitive advantage, you can be more flexible than those bigger competitors and use it, save money, but also grow and attract that talent because they want it. Study after study again shows people want flexibility. That does not mean work less, by the way. That just <laughs> means a little bit of control. And it's true. People think I give people flexibility. That means they want to work less. No, they just want to have some control over how, when, and where they get their jobs done. Give that to them and you will benefit. Yeah, I think they actually work more, right? Because yes. then like you know, they're, it's in their office, it's in their home, and they've got all their technology. Yes. It never turns off. So you probably are That's working. That's not good. You don't want it to never turn off because then you got a whole bunch of burned out people. But <laughs> you give them the, the control that will help them have a little more work-life fit that actually does help them be more productive. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. Uh, we used to say that we were living in a material world. We're now living in a digital world yeah. and embracing that technology right. and that mobility to be flexible with your workforce allows you to find the best talent possible and not be yeah. constrained by geography for a lot of different business types. So and keep well the people said. you got and keep, <laughs> keep the people you have. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, before we have to go, I want to take the opportunity to, to, pun entirely intended, wrap our conversation up in a bow because we've had so many great takeaways about ending 2016 and really creating that right environment for your employees, as well as looking ahead to 2017. So I want to ask each of you to either recap your best suggestion or give us a new one of that one thing every small business owner should be doing as they close out 2016 and look ahead of 2017 so they can be more successful. And Sharon, let's, let's kick things off with you. 
So there are 28 million small businesses in the United States. And, and to me, as small business goes, so does the economy. They represent 99% of all employers in this United States. So we need to make sure we are taking care of small business owners, we're investing in them, and they are investing in their local communities. So friends, family, local communities mean so much to small business owners. And I think this time of year coming upon the holidays, it's a great time to reflect and think about how you're gonna plan ahead for 2017 um, and incorporate all of those elements into your business plan. And we talked a little bit about business plans today and the flexibility. We were talking more about work life and where you work. But, but I think one thing that I hear a lot from small business owners when I ask them, what would you do differently now that now that you know that you're established, that you've been in business, you know, five, 10 years, they often tell me, I wish I would have been more flexible with my business plan. What I started with and my blueprint and now where I am today is very different. And so I think flexibility applies across a lot of, of aspects for a small business owner. So just be sure to be flexible, revisit your business plan, and make sure it makes sense for this new economy that we're entering into in 2017. All right, very well said. Flexibility, obviously a key theme in many arenas here. Steve, what about you? I'm guessing it's something about having a party where uh, people don't have to make up the time. Right. I mean, come on. If you're going to have a party, let's, you know, let's do it the right way. You know, uh, I, I think the other important point is it really is a good time of year to think about resolutions. Personally, yes, we all do that, but uh, are, are supposed to, or, uh, but business resolutions, what can you do a little differently next year? You know, how can you improve? How can you serve your customers better? How can you take care of your employees better? Uh, how can you make a little bit more money? Those are all things good to think about right now. Absolutely, and none of those require a treadmill, so they are much, much easier to yes. keep. <laughs> and Callie, what about you? What's your last piece of advice here? You know, small business owners, we are people too, and my advice would be is do something for yourself. I know for myself, I love what I do. I can actually find myself working a lot, which is fine, but this holiday season, pick one small thing that's really meaningful for you and make sure you find the time to make that happen. So for example, the other night I went to a cookie exchange with a bunch of friends on a Wednesday night, which uh, usually I would never do. And it was such a wonderful hour well spent. Um, I did not cook my, bake my cookies, I bought them. Um, but still I was able to go and truly it, it made all the difference. So do something for yourself this holiday season. All right, Kelly, I want to know where I can get an invite to this cookie exchange. You're there next year, Carol. Yeah, I, 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 that sounds like the most amazing thing ever, and I'm going to put that on my to-do list is to, to find friends who know how to bake or buy cookies and want to exchange them. <laughs> you just need a friend who knows how to serve wine. That's really all. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all it takes. <laughs> and really, what a great note to end on. <laughs> So really, really good advice. I have to leave it there for the evening, but I want to thank you, Sharon Miller, Steve Strauss, and Kelly williams yost for this fantastic, not only informational advice, but really inspirational as we come up upon the end of 2016 and head into 2017. So thank you so much for your great advice. Oh, thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. And of course, for our viewers, I want to thank you again for taking the time to not only work on your business, but to really invest in your success. And I hope that the tips that you heard here and the strategies, you'll implement those, and it will really help you have a happy and successful holiday season, and of course, a fantastic 2017. On behalf of Bank of America, I am Carol Roth, and I will see you next time. <laughs>